Hello Maricopa and welcome to another episode of In Maricopa Spotlight. Today we have Constance Jackson, the president of the NAACP in Pinal County. Welcome Constance. Thank you. Uh, we want to get the community familiar with who you are and uh, what it is that the NAACP does for the city of Maricopa and uh, for the greater uh, Pinal County. So if you could just give me a little bit of background about yourself, how you, where you come from and how you came to be here in Maricopa. Uh, well, I was actually born in Great Falls, Montana. Grew up in Minnesota, Minneapolis. Uh, I was married and I moved to Baltimore, Maryland. And after working and retiring early, I came out here on business. I visited for a few days. I'm like, I like it. So I came back and I told her I will be back before the end of the year. And I was here in January 2008. Wow. Did you immediately step into the role of the, the president of the NAACP in Pinal County? Or was that oh, no. Uh -uh. I, I didn't start this until about three and a half years ago. And the first thing that I went to was the Maricopa Dems, Copa City Dems meeting that was held by Henry Wade. And that got me into politics. But I had grown up with politics. My dad was very much involved. So... It just was kind of the start of, and then I was asking questions, you know, and wondering if um, they had a, you know, a chapter or a branch here, actually. And they used to, and it had been inactive for about 15 years. So I decided to talk to the person I needed to talk to, my mentor, Mr. Fennell, and uh, we were reactivated about two, and a, about two and a half years ago. How do race relations here in Maricopa compare to Baltimore? I actually went into culture shock when I went to Baltimore. I mean, I had friends, you know, both Caucasian and African Americans, and it seemed like they weren't, like, connected. But I could connect with both. But people sometimes didn't understand because I had friends on both sides, okay? So it made it kind of odd for me being raised in a multicultural family and noticing people that, okay, we're going to sit over here, but you're going to sit, you know, the other group's going to sit over here. And I thought that was weird because I wasn't raised like that. My dad is, was, he's passed away three years ago today. Um, he was German and Blackfoot Indian. He's registered in Black, in the uh, reservation in Montana, in Browning. Wow. And my mother's side, I have the Cherokee. That's a unique combination. German, Native American, and African American. That's yeah. I'm like a confused child. <laughs> I don't know about confusion. That's something to be proud of. It uh, is. I think that it is. And my dad was actually very much into politics and race relations. Okay, he went down south during the time when they were registering people to vote, and I was like young teenager then. Okay, Dad, I'll see you in a few days. You know, not understanding at that time where he was going and what he was doing. I didn't appreciate it until after I got older. You know, I think I was raised in a bubble in that kind of protection because, like I say, when I moved to Maryland, it was like culture shock to me. I think because we have Chief Stalls, that he is the right person for the job and keeps his officers and they're well-trained to know what they're supposed to do. It's a lot different than in Baltimore. Uh, I could have lost one of my sons being pulled over in Baltimore. But I don't fear that here. Tell me a little bit about what the Maricopa Police Department is doing to help the, the, the branch of the NAACP in Pinal County and to help race, race relations here. Well, Chief Stalls and I last fall kind of joined forces and it was after the incident in Minneapolis, or in St. Paul, Minnesota, where the gentleman was shot by a policeman. And Mr. Wade had a candlelight vigil in the park and she stalls had talked to me like the day before and said, we need to get together. And I said, mm-hmm. And in like five minutes, we decided that we had to do something. So I did an interview then to set up the meeting for the following week for Let's Have That Talk. And I just named it that because to me, it's letting people know, come out. It's a community forum. But he explained it so well. And he had his officers were there a few times in explaining why they became officers and how do they feel about having to stop, you know, citizens. But it's letting people get out what's on their chest. You can't go home and mumble to yourself. Nothing gets done like that. 
for those of you who aren't aware, um, Maricopa is quite a diverse community. Um, and it's not so segregated as diverse communities tend to be. Um, you don't have an African American community that congregates in one neighborhood, an Asian American community that congregates in another. We're sort of all intermixed. Um, what do you think Maricopa is doing right to embrace these diverse cultures, and uh, what do you think it needs to do better? I, oh, I think people just like living here. Most people are very polite when you see them. Everybody says hello, you know, and I don't really see the problems. Um, but, you know, yeah, we do have some problems. I just saw graffiti when I came home, and I'm not happy about that. Um, but other than that, we don't have many problems. You know, I think every day, and right now, the situation in the United States is not good. Bottom line, it's not. But people have gotten complacent, and they you say, oh, well, I'm okay until something happens, you know. And to me, at this point in time, right now, anything could happen. I me mean, as a black woman, I do and go and do what I have to do. And that's just because I'm that independent and I will do it. And people sometimes warn me, don't do, don't go. But that's not me, you know. I just think people need to really get a grip. And that's why I stress, voter registration. If you don't vote, or you stand back and say, oh, well, mine doesn't count. That's not true. Your vote is your voice. And until everybody steps up and decides this is what I'm going to do to make things better, things won't get better. Well, thank you, Constance. It's been a I think you do. You. And this has been another episode of In Maricopa Spotlight. Thanks for watching.